Aloha, Richard Halverson here. This is ITS 388AL, and uh, we're in Chapter 8. And uh, so uh, Chapter 8 is entitled Advanced Procedures. And uh, here we learn how assembly language can interface to higher level languages uh, and how higher level languages, uh, how methods of higher level languages um, uh, interface to each other and uh, and the allocation of, of variables and so on. So uh, so uh, we're going to cover this chapter in a series of videos, and we're first going to talk about stack frames. We're going to learn about stack frames, and uh, that's what happens when a method calls another method, and then variables are allocated. And then after that, we're going to talk about recursion, and uh, this. Uh, recursion you've you've all heard of recursion uh, and we can see exactly how recursion recursive programs are implemented in assembly language uh, there are some nice directives here that uh, help support um, assembly language and the calling of programs and so on and so we'll we we, we will cover those and then and then at the end um, the uh, assignment the programming assignment for this chapter is um, um, a, recur a, a recursive version of the Greatest Common Divisor program. Uh, and you have written the Greatest Common Divisor program in a non-recursive version, and um, uh, it, the assignment for this chapter is to write a recursive version of it. All right, so, uh, so let's go to the slides. Um, so advanced procedures. Um, so we're going to talk about stack frames in this video. Uh, stack frames. Uh, we're going to learn about stack parameters. Um, there's uh, some. There's several very important uh, parameters that get uh, allocated on the stack, and uh, where how local variables uh, local to a method or local to a procedure or a function are allocated and, and uh, accessed. Uh, there's a couple of nice instructions, oops, there's a couple of nice instructions uh, to help us call and return from um, subroutines. And then uh, this local uh, directive, which, which is a way uh, for, uh, to al it, it kind of replaces the enter, um, if you're gonna, if your if your method uh, is going to um, require local variables, uh, you can use the local uh, directive to, to to allocate those, and it it um, it works nicely with the the leave instruction. Um, and we're actually going to wait to talk about the right stack frame procedure until uh, a couple of videos from now. This I I can tell these chap these uh, slides were made using an earlier version even though it says version 7 down here uh, because uh, he has I've I've used previous versions of this textbook and uh, he moved he moved uh, some stuff around and you'll see uh, and so uh, we're following the order of topics in the textbook and in the textbook that right stack frame doesn't we, we don't talk about that till down here and we're and today we're just going to cover this section. So um, a stack frame it's, is also known as an activation record. Uh, it's an area of the stack that's set aside for a procedure's return address, the past variables, the saved registers, and the local variables. Let's see, let me see if my pencil works here. Yes, uh, a, uh, a, and we will be looking at some, some illustrations soon here. Uh, um, a, stack, a stack frame or an activation record is created uh, by the following steps. First of all, the calling program uh, pushes the arguments onto the stack and calls the, the, the procedure. Okay, so, so arguments, of course, are a functions or a, or a routines or a procedures uh, parameters. Um, you, you know, you pass you pass 
uh, you can pass a method, some parameters, and that's what we're talking about here. So those arguments uh, are pushed onto the stack, and then, and then the procedure is called. Uh, the first thing that the procedure does is it pushes the base, the e base, the EBP um, uh, register onto the stack to save it, and then it pushes the stack pointer, the value of the stack pointer, into the EBP register. And so this uh, uh, EBP is extended, uh, stands for extended base pointer, and and it is. Uh, using the extended base pointer that the procedure uses to reference both the arguments, the parameters that it was passed, and its local variables. So if local variables are needed, uh, a, a constant is then subtracted from ESP. Remember the stack grows down. So if you're gonna allocate some extra space on the stack, you subtract from the, from the stack pointer. And so however many variables are gonna be local variables, uh, uh, that number times four, of course, because uh, it's four bytes per, per number, uh, that constant is subtracted from the stack pointer, and then the stack pointer is ready to be used if, if this procedure calls another procedure. So, um, and uh, the base pointer uh, uh, looks upward or uh, looks higher in the stack for the parameters and it looks downward uh, for the local variables that are allocated. So um, here we uh, here we sort of uh, compare uh, passing parameters on the stack versus passing versus using registers to uh, to pass parameters and 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 an example is the dump dump mem uh, program that you, we, you've probably used in the Irvine uh, library. And uh, so you can use that program either way. You, you either um, call it this way, where first of all, you push all your registers on the stack, and then you put the, you know, we're, we're, we're dumping memory. So there's an array address. There, you have to give it the length of the array and whether the array is bytes or words or double words or whatever. So these are parameters that need to be passed to dump mem, and then dump mem does its thing, displays it out, and then it returns. And so uh, one way to pass it parameters is to use registers. We're using the registers here. Another way is to push the parameters on the stack this way and then, and then call it. So uh, you know, there's there's efficiency. You know, this this is probably more efficient. It it it, it you know pushing pushing parameters onto the stack is it takes time. It, you have to access you know memory twice. You know the uh, random ra random access memory twice. Whereas here you're just dealing with registers inside the the um, the processor, so it can be faster and so on. Um, But uh, the other problem, of course, is that if you it is you're limited if you use this way, you're limited by the number of of uh, of parameters you can pass and the and the number of parameters you can return uh, because there's a limited number of registers. Whereas theoretically, the stack is uh, is endless; you can pass as many as you want. Um, there's different ways of passing arguments. Passing by value, passing by reference, and so and we know what these mean already. But uh, uh, to put them in in assembly language terms, uh, when you're passing arguments by value, you you push the value the actual values themselves onto the stack, and um, we have to uh, so we don't get all mixed up and messed up with the stack. We always push 32-bit values. So we may if so if we're only dealing with bytes. And we're pushing a bunch, pushing a bunch of bytes on the stack. We those bytes will take up four bytes because uh, we need to keep the um, uh, the this the stack. It's a lot easier for us if we keep the stack uh, word widths, uh, you know, uniform. So um, 
uh, so um, when you pass arguments by value, uh, you, you, you push them onto the stack, uh, you push the values themselves onto the stack, uh, you call the procedure, and then uh, most often you reach the return values in the EAX register. Um, and then you have to remove the arguments, uh, you have to remove the arguments from the stack uh, so it doesn't get messed up. Uh, now, in some cases, um, depending on what the, the calling convention is, um, the procedure itself may remove those arguments off the stack. Uh, or, uh, and so your calling, your calling conventions, of course, need to be uh, consistent. C, C plus, C and C and C plus plus use a different calling convention than C sharp. We'll get into that a little bit later. Okay, so here's an example of, of calling, uh, of passing by values. Uh, we have, uh, we, you know, push, you know, prior stack prior to the call looks like this. What are we doing here? Oh. I'm not sure this makes sense, but um, here we, uh, the stack prior to call, all right, prior to call. So, so uh, we have two values here, value one and value two. And first, and, and in this example, first we're pushing value two. So, so these are parameters we're passing. Value two is a value one and value two, and we always push in reverse order. So, uh, so the la so if we have a parameter list, uh, the very last value is pushed first, and then the one previous and the one previous. So, so value two is passed, value one is passed, and so so in the stack, uh, so. Uh, value the okay value one is six so six is pushed it, actually it starts out the stack is right it starts out with the stack pointer right here and we don't know what this is and uh, so to push the six the stack pointer comes down to here and then the six is stored and then to push the five the stack pointer comes down here and the five is stored and then the procedure is called and so that's so that's what happens next, and we'll get to that. The other way you can send a pass parameters is by reference, and there, instead of pushing uh, the values onto the stack, you're pushing the addresses onto the stack, and so you know the offset from zero onto the stack, and then you call the procedure, return, and then again you have to remove the arguments if the procedure doesn't doesn't remove them. So, so in a case like that, here we're, we're pushing references. So, you know, first, uh, so we have six and five and we're gonna pass that. Uh, so here we pass the address of six uh, and then the address of, uh, we push uh, the address of six, the address of five. And so the stack here is, is no longer, it, the stack does not contain the values, it contains the address of the values. So this, this 04 is, is the offset, so it's, it's pointing to right here. So, so, this, so, so it's an indirect reference to the actual value. And then after the stack, um, uh, or I mean after the call, the return address, you know, as with any kind of call, the return address is pushed onto the stack. So we've got, you know, the value two, value one, and then the return address. And that's gonna be used with a return instruction. Okay, for, for pushing, if we, if we wanna pass an array by reference, then we're basically passing the address of the first element of the array. So, so there's a, a there is a program in your textbook called Array Fill, and uh, it looks something like this. Uh, and, and we'll see how that works in a moment. Um, and so the, the, what Array Fill does is is it fills um, it fills an array it fills it fills an array with 16-bit random integers. So you have to pass it, you know, the number, the size of the array, and then you call it and it, it fills it up with random integers and then it returns. The calling program passes the address of the array along with the number of elements of the array. 
So here we have like the number of elements. Here we have the starting address of the array, the array. And um, uh, so, to, so when we call the array fill program, uh, first, first we push the array and then we push the count onto the stack, it calls it. Oops. And so array fill can reference an array without knowing the array's name. Yeah, it doesn't need to know the name. So, um, so it, it pushes, uh, okay, so it, now inside array fill, inside this procedure, the first thing we do is we push the base pointer because we're gonna use it. We're gonna use it to reference all the variables. The arguments that were, uh, the parameters that were passed in and any local variables. And then it's got to, uh, uh, so the way it uses it, it takes, what, it takes where the stack pointer is pointing to and sticks that into EBP because as you see back here, um, right now the stack pointer is sitting right there. These are arguments or parameters that were passed in and local variables will be allocated down here. And so now this is EBP. And so we can do uh, EBP plus, you know, or EBP plus four or EBP plus eight. And these are, that's how it, you access the arguments or the parameters that were passed in. And then you do um, EBP, you know, minus four to access the, the first, uh, the first uh, local variable and EBP minus eight to access the second local variable and so on. That's how that works. And here we see it um, where we're gonna move, uh, the first thing that was passed in, EB, the first thing that was passed in was the offset. We see that here, yeah, the first thing that was passed in is the offset. That's the, the address of the array. And then the next thing that was passed in was the number of elements that you want of the size of the array. So the first thing that was passed in was the offset. The next thing that was passed in was the number. And then, uh, as you recall, you know, the, the, the return address is pushed on there because this, this is the re a result of the actual call. And then, uh, uh, and then, so that's the return address. And then the first thing we do is we push, so, so ESP is here, ESP. And then we push the current base point or whatever it is into, um, we push the current base pointer, you know, from the calling procedure because we want to save it. We want to pop it back out when we, when we return. Uh, we push that in. So that ends up being pushed right after, you know, stack grows down, right after uh, the return address. And then we store the return address so the, the, the ESP is now here because it just pushed in, pushed it in there. And then we copy the, that value into the base pointer itself. And that's our reference point. So then the first thing uh, array fill does is it pushes all the registers because it doesn't want to doesn't want to ruin any of the registers. It's going to pop them back out again when it's done. So now it's going to pop out uh, all the registers and it's going to pop out uh, EBP also. Hmm. All right. Uh, so here uh, here we're going to push. So okay. So now EBP is here. Uh, EBB plus four is the return address. We're not going to do anything. We're, we're, we're we're never going to reference that until we until we return, uh, and then EBP plus eight is the is the size of the array, and EBP plus twelve is the address of the array, and of course it goes up each time by four because it, we're using four bytes per 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 double word, and so uh, to do this array fill procedure, we are going to first load the offset of the array, the address into the address of the array into the extended source index register, ESI. And then we're gonna be counting. And so we're gonna, uh, you know, we're gonna have a loop and decrement the count and so on. So we're gonna use the ECX e counter register uh, and we, we throw the count in there. And, uh, and then we loop away and generate random numbers and so on and let's see what happens next. View the complete program. We can look at the complete program here, uh, push, push EBP, push ESP and EBP, um, push the registers, use 
uh, get the offset of the array in there, counter, uh, and then we just loop here. Of course, if, if, if it comes in and the count is zero, in other words, if we load, let's see, let me do something fancy here. I'm gonna stop sharing. And I'm gonna share this screen. And so now I'm sharing this screen. And I'm gonna, um, here I am. I'm gonna put, uh, I'm gonna do this, this, and this. All right, um, okay. There one? Yeah, okay, there I am. Um, and so then I'm gonna put this, can I do this? This over here, on top of me. And I'm gonna put this over here. All right. And I gotta use my finger now. Oh, that's not gonna work, is it? Oh, well. Uh, all right, so we, um, can I do this? Oh, there. So, uh, so the first thing we test to see if, if the count is zero, I mean, so, so in other words, if, if this value is zero, and it's, it's not, because uh, if it was, it would just uh, it would jump jump over and and return. This is what it does when it returns. It it pops pop it restores the registers because it pushed them up here. It restores EBP because it pushed it here, and then this this particular uh, procedure uses the standard call method, which is which is what C sharp uses. Uh, and it takes care of cleaning up the stack. See, so uh, there were, there were, uh, well, anyway, so, so this is the right number for, uh, did this thing, oh, this thing passed, ah, yes, eight, uh, four and four. See, these are the, it was pushed. These were, these were pushed on the stack. So, so these are the parameters these are the arguments that were passed to array fill. The offset, the address of the array, and the number of elements in the array. And so that, so it used up eight bytes. You know, four for this one, four for this one. And so in this uh, procedure, the procedure takes care of putting the stack back the way it was before this thing was, uh, was ever pushed. So that's what this return eight does. It says, um, it says return, because the return address is, is, is uh, at the top of the stack at the moment. It's, it's, it's like this. It's just like this. It's before, it's before any of this other stuff was done. So it's, it's this, the status of this right here. And so it does the return. And then after, after you do the return, Dec uh, increment the stack pointer eight more times. And so it's gonna, it's gonna return and the stack would be here, but then it does eight more. So it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is where it should be, okay? And so that's why you push these, you call this, and you don't have to do anything, uh, you know, because the array field took care of the popping, popping. All right, very interesting, isn't it? So here, uh, oh, access, okay, here we talk about the calling conventions. In C, in C and C++, functions access the stack parameters using constant offsets of EBP. Oh yeah, well, C Sharp does that too, like this. Uh, the EBP is called the base pointer or the frame pointer because it holds the base address of the stack frame. EBP does not change throughout the function. It just sits there and, it, and it's used as a reference point. And, and EBP must be restored to its original value when the function returns. Uh, and the return instruction now. Uh, so the, the return instruction pops, pops the, uh, the address, the return address 
back into the instruction pointer. And then, um, and then it transfers control back to the target address. Now, there's two, uh, there's two forms. This is just a plain old return, and that's what we've been using you know, prior to this because we aren't messing with anything, pushing parameters on the stack. Or there's this second version, and it's, it's probably a longer byte. It's a, it's a two-byte instruction probably. This is probably a one-byte instruction. It's probably a two-byte instruction. It says how many, uh, how many bytes to, to increment the stack pointer after you return. N bytes to be added to the stack pointer after, the, after uh, it has been returned, after a, re, a control is returned to the calling program. So who removes parameters off the stack? Uh, okay, so C or C++ uses, uh, um, in C or C++, the caller is responsible for uh, cleaning up the stack because these parameters were passed, these arguments were passed. So, and to me, this makes a little bit more sense, but that's not how we do it. That, this is what's called standard call. And in standard call, the, the, um, the, the calling, the called procedure has got to be a lot smarter, and it should be. The calling procedure should know precisely how many parameters uh, were passed onto the stack. And so the calling procedure takes care of cleaning up the stock, the stack. Uh, whereas in C or C++, the, the function or the, uh, the code, the program, the subroutine that called add to takes care of cleaning up the stack. You got that? All right, um, here's an example of uh, the difference program, uh, which, which subtracts the first argument from the second one. Okay, so a sample call, so we're gonna, this is the first argument, this is the second argument, and then this program will, will subtract the first argument from the second, so it'll do 30 minus 14, and it'll leave the result in the EAX register when it returns right there to that point. And so, um, so when this thing is called, the first thing it does is it stores away the base pointer, uh, push, puts the stack pointer, moves the value of the stack pointer over to the base pointer. It uh, references the second argument, which is the 30. And then it references the first argument, which is the 14. Oh, it subtracts this subtracts the first argument from the second argument, which it's which it's stuck into the accumulator. And then it and then it restores EBP, you know, does the complement of this, and then it cleans up the stack for the caller. So the caller doesn't need to do anything after this; just goes on its merry way. And the fact that these two have added eight bytes to the stack is taken care of inside the procedure. This says that when you're pushing uh, uh, 8 bit and 16 bit arguments, you, you, you always have to pass a 32 bit. You actually always have to pass 32 bits. So that's where we, we use this move ZX or move SX instruction to take a smaller, you know, take a 8 bit argument and, and, um, and make it, see this thing takes an 8-bit argument and makes it a 32-bit argument uh, by extending the upper bits properly. So here it's move ZX and move zeros into the upper uh, bits, and then S as, uh, assumes a signed uh, variable, a signed 8-bit variable or 16-bit variable, and when it does the move, it does a sign extension. It, it, it copies the highest order bit um, across to the higher order uh, bytes. And even when you're passing multi-word arguments, you gotta, you gotta take care of that. Push higher order values on the stack first and then work backwards. Uh, and, and as a result, okay, so it's, this is if we have huge O numbers, like this is a huge O number here. And remember, we're doing little endian. So uh, it turns out that when, when you pass it in this, in this order, it turns out it works out right and, uh, every, and it makes sense when you uh, build it back up again. So they've thought about all this stuff. 
Okay, here's about saving and restoring uh, registers. Uh, push registers on the stack just after assigning. So, so um, you want to take care of the passing in of parameters and the allocation of local variables. You want to take care of that first, and then um, and then when you're done with that, you uh, you uh, um, is that right? Am I saying the right thing? Yeah, that um, push the registers on the stack just after assigning ESP. Okay, so um, no, uh, wait a minute. Anyway, you have to push the registers on the stack after assigning uh, EBP uh, uh, because um, because you want to use you want the stack to be um, pointing to a word that can be that can be used that that's not going to be allocated a variable okay so i think you so you push the local registers before you allocate the local variables uh there's a there's a uses oper uh, uses um operator here which uh which takes care of of setting aside these registers for use inside the, the procedure. Uh, so it, it pushes these onto the stack, um, and then these registers can be available for use inside the program. And then uh, when you use PROC and NP, then it, it, it automatically restores them. So the uses operator generates the code to save and restore the registers. So this Proc uses ECX EDX automatically generates this code here. It pushes them and then pops them back out again in the right order to restore them back to the caller. And uh, local variables, I'm going to move my screen back. My... That's right, I'm not sharing anymore. Let me share this again. And we are doing this. All right, um, allocation of local variables. Uh, only statements within a procedure can view or modify local variables. Of course, they're local. Storage used by local variables is released when the subroutine ends, just like in a higher level language. A local variable name can have the same name as a local variable in another function without creating a name clash, just like higher level language. Uh, essential when writing recursive procedures, because uh, you got to keep track of that, and we're going to see that in the in a following video uh, for this chapter. So when we create local variables, uh, create Let's say we're going to create two double word local variables to store this and this. Uh, we first, um, the procedure first saves EBP, and then it uh, it it uh, stores the value of the stack pointer in EBP, so it can be so EBP now has its reference point, and then we allocate two double words. Um, after EDP or underneath EDP uh, for our local variables. And, and so it's two, it's eight because we're two four, two four byte variables. Um, and then here we are, um, we are, here's how we actually are accessing these variables. This is EBP minus four, which is this accessing this local variable EBP minus eight references this local variable. And it's minus because as you, as you know, the stack goes down. The, the LEA instruction is, is used uh, um, to compute the effective address, load effective address, um, when we're dealing with offsets uh, 
from that are on the stack. <clears throat> um, we normally uh, it uh, and and uh, we cannot use uh, you know standard like you know offsets and so on because because this assumes a static allocation. This um, we use offset if we know if the assembler <coughs> can figure out the actual address of this <coughs> excuse me this allocated variable. If this variable is allocated off this if this variable is allocated inside of a procedure, a procedure that was called, uh, we don't know the the address of this variable at all because uh, it's it's on the stack someplace. And so this kind of instruction won't work because 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 this refers to us this com this assembles to a you know static assembly time known value. So instead we use an L the LEA instruction. And this this is referring to count, which is which was allocated off this which was allocated on the stack. And so this instruction is smart enough to um, to know to start with EBP and uh, and then um, and then it and then it knows that this this is going to be you know four bytes you know EBP minus four and uh, and so this so then LEA is able to compute the actual effective address then and so then that can be stored in EDI so uh, and and temp temp would be you know e b p minus eight and it's an address and so we load that address using the lei instruction we compute that effective address and store that in the esi suppose you have a local variable at e b p minus eight uh, and you need uh you need to address that you need the address of it you cannot do this because it you know doesn't this is not this is this changes, uh, you know, depending on, especially in a recursive in a recursive program, it's going to be changing. Uh, so instead, you use the LEA, and this this computes. This computes it. This computes it's an F. Yeah, this computes the actual the actual address from it. This is, uh, you know, yes, that. Um, this is an offset from the EBP pointer. Uh, now the 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 enter instruction uh, uh, the enter instruction creates the stack frame for procedure. So all this kind of stuff you've been learning about pushing the you know pushing the base pointer pointer and all that. If you use the enter instruction, you don't have to to uh, to keep track of that. So what the enter instruction does is it, it does a few things. First of all, it pushes the EBP uh, pointer onto the stack to save it. Then it sets EBP. EBP to what the stack pointer is, and then it also reserves space for the local variables. So, um, so if you, uh, um, so if you want to call, you know, a, a program that that uh, is gonna. Uh, um, wait a minute. Now this this is this this is the first. It doesn't take care of the call itself. This is the first. The first instruction inside of a of a procedure. So um, instead of this, where you, a, you come in with a procedure, uh, it pushes EBP, it moves the e stack pointer into the base pointer, and then allocates two double words for um, for uh, local variables. Instead, you just do this, and it takes care of it for you. The eight is this eight. Okay, and the second, do we talk about the second parameter here? The second parameter is actually um, used because you can have, uh, a, oh, because when you leave this, this leave instruction here, okay, so uh, I'll, I'll get to that in a moment. Uh, the leave instruction sort of complements the enter instruction and and you just put that at the end, and it takes care of um, of putting everything back. 
does it show? It doesn't show the equivalent, does it? Well, anyway, the, the, the leave instruction uh, will take care of, um, of putting the stack back the way it was. And so uh, you can have procedures calling procedures since, see, is that where block structure languages? Um, Uh, let's see, let me, I need to check that. Hold on a second here. All right, um, I did a little research here and, uh, it, and an explanation of uh, how this supports block structured languages, uh, higher level languages is gonna uh, require a short discussion on what a block structured language is, and uh, that's sort of beyond the scope of this of this class. So let's just always use a zero there, and that'll take it take care of all of our needs. Uh, uh, basically, uh, the the leave instruction returns the stack the way it was uh, before the call, and it it doesn't really have anything to do with the um, with the param the parameters or the uh, the um, uh, the arguments that were passed into the, the procedure. The local directive is a way of declaring a list of local variables. Um, uh, and and um, so it's uh, it's similar to a higher level language where we we have a procedure and then we use this local uh, directive and we list. Uh, variables that we're going to be are going to be used um, locally. So, so for example, um, you know this this will will allocate uh, this 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 allocates you know an array of bytes uh, uh, below the base pointer or on the stack. This uh, this allocates a pointer called p array to a, a, a or a word size pointer. Uh, and uh, and here inside um, the myproc procedure, we're we're allocating a, a local variable called t1, which is simply a byte. Uh, here's a bubble sort example of uh, bubble sort requires a temporary word and a swap flag to 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 come to uh, record if there if a swap took place in a pass. And so uh, this this is how, this is the code that's generated. Um, this subtracts, you know, two or eight. It subtracts eight from the ESP pointer. This is this is minus eight. If you you look at that, you can figure it out. That's minus eight. You add this to the ESP pointer, and that. To the ESP register, and that effectively subtracts eight from it, and then this puts it back when it's done. So this is how it's allocated. We see the return, of course, the return address is here, and then this is the storing of the EBP register onto the stack, and then these are the two variables that were allocated. And at that time, at that point, the ESP register is pointing here. Because if it needs to do anything else, it always decrements first and then allocates below that. Non-double word lo local variables can be of different size, and this uh, this this takes the local directive takes care of that to make sure that it's it's lined up properly, so you don't get um, off because of different size uh, words. Here is um, local local byte variable uh, we uh, here here we're allocating a, a variable a byte size variable and even though it takes up four bytes uh, it it uh, local is going to allocate this amount of space because it wants to keep everything lined up but um, but it does it in a way it's you know it puts it in the right place so when we do a move, it's you know just one byte down from the EBP pointer. 
All right, and this right stack frame uh, procedure uh, we'll talk about when we talk about invoke. And you can read the 64-bit calling procedure if you want. Uh, all right, that's, I'm gonna close up this video and um, next, next time we're, we'll start talking about recursion, all right? Thanks for watching.